Hello, I'm Mr. B Bates One, and welcome back to another how to video. In today's video, we are going to be looking at the new dialogue command. There are two new commands that comes with this, so let's take a look and see how they work. You will need to create your very own behavior pack for Minecraft to make this to work. Now, I have made a video about how to do this. There will be a link at the end of the video and in the description below, so please do check that out if you're not sure how to do this. It's super easy, I promise you. You don't need a lot of knowledge in setting this up. I've broken this down into different elements just to make it easy and understandable, which we will take a look at in just a moment. Now, I have here behind me an old build that I did about a year ago, and I've placed a few NPCs around the castle just to demonstrate how we can put this into practice. Uh, you know, a bit of a showcase, as you will. So that's coming up at the end of the video as well. So let's take a look at the code first of all. So we have the basics of our behavior pack here. Now, before you can use the actual dialogue command, you do need to set up your own dialogue file first. So in your behavior pack, you do need to add a folder called dialogue. And then inside this folder, you will need to create your dialogue file. Now, this needs to be what we call a JSON file. Now, you can call this file whatever it is you want, as long as it has the file extension of .json. You want to open this file up then in any form of text editor. And then once you have it inside, you want to actually write out what you see here on the screen. This is basically the basic layout of what is needed for the dialogue to work. As you can see from the example on the screen here, we have some placeholder text, which we can switch out to whatever it is that we need to be. So let's take a look at the main elements. We have the scene tag, the NPC name, and the text field. The scene tag is the name of the scene. So you need to make this something meaningful, but at the same time, I recommend making it something short. If you're doing a lot of dialogue stuff, the last thing you want to be doing is writing out lots of scene names. The NPC name and text field, I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory, really. I don't feel like I need to go into that at all. So the next thing is, do you want to add commands or buttons? These can do anything you want, from progress to the next scene, give items, take items, whatever it is that you want it to do, you can add these in. Now, you can do this in three different ways. Now, you can have the command run as soon as the dialog box opens, or perhaps when it closes. Or maybe you only want the command to run when a player clicks a button. And you can also specify more than one command by creating an array of commands inside of the square brackets. So once your dialog file is complete, you need to navigate to your com.mojang folder and place your behavior pack in the development behavior packs folder. Now the reason why we place it here first is, is so that you can make amendments in the file if you make a mistake without you having the need to delete and re-import it. Once your pack is loaded into Minecraft, you will want to attach this to your world. Now you can do this to an existing world or a new world. It doesn't matter. What you do is you navigate to the behavior pack section and you would simply select your behavior pack and activate it. Now this instance, mine's already activated on this world for this tutorial, but you would find it under my packs and you would simply activate it and add it to your world. So with this attached then, let's get straight into the world. So now that we're in our world then, we need to first of all spawn in an NPC of some kind. Now with an NPC, you will always need one, at least to trigger uh, these commands properly, uh, but you don't necessarily have to have the NPC on show. You can run the command itself through command block, either through the chat window or directly from the NPC. For the purposes though of this video, we're going to be running it directly from an NPC. Let's just take a look at the actual command itself first of all. Now, as you can see here, we have two options, change and open. Now, when you first spawn in your NPC, you will need to set the actual dialog to that NPC first of all. So the, the first command we're going to use is change. Uh, the target is the NPC that we want to target. Now, the one next to me, I've already spawned in uh, with a name. So in this instance, I believe it's just this. The next thing after that then would be the name of the scene. Now remember we were saying before about making the scene names easy and understandable. Uh, obviously you want to make sure uh, that it's easy for you to remember to type in. In this instance, I called it just placeholder. Now the next section is optional, the players. If you do not provide a target at this point, it will set this dialogue for every player that enters the world. If you place a name after this, it will set it for just that player. So it's all dependent on how you want to use it. Once you run that command, you will get a confirmation saying that it is run successfully. And if we have a look here, we've actually got this in our command block here, just to show you how it works. So I've got it as an execute command. So if we run that, as you can see here, successfully changed this for globally. So now if we just turn to game mode A and take a look at our little NPC here, this is our placeholder. And as you can see, I am just the placeholder, the one that makes it all happen. Well, maybe not, but let's begin anyways. Before time began for 1.17, there was no such thing as dialogues. And yet now here we are cycling through a dialogue system. With the use of dialogues, you can create any number of possible scenarios. This is achieved by the use of scenes. The scene file is a JSON file located inside the dialogue folder in the root directory of the active directory, uh, behavior pack. And for the first time on Bedrock Edition, you can create interactive play with direct user targeting. With the new initiator selector, you now have pinpoint accuracy 
when running commands against players. And do you want to see an example of this? I'm sure you do. Just click complete to find out. And as you can see, we have an apple. Thank you very much, Tutorial NPC. How do we just achieve all of that? Well, we achieved that by using the second command, the dialog open command. Now, if we just look at that in its basic form, we do the open command. So the first thing is then is the NPC that we want to open the dialog for, which is why we always need an NPC in the world. So again, I will target the NPC I have. Oh, wrong one. Next to me. The next thing is the target. So in this case, I'm going to target myself because I'm running it from the actual chat window. And then the next one will be the scene name, which again is placeholder. If we were to look at the NPC directly, as you can see here, it's using the open command to use itself against the initiator that initiated the interaction and it'll move on to the next scene. And then when they move on to the next scene, there'll be another command for that and that and so on. And that is it. That is the very basics of using the dialogue command. However, its capabilities don't end there. There is also quite a few other things you can use it for. So watch out for future videos on this. But for the time being, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick showcase of how I've utilized this dialogue scenes a little bit, just to sort of play out some little scenarios around the castle that I thought was really cool. So let's just take a look at that. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for getting to the end of the video. And if you ever, ever, ever so kind, please do hit that like button. It does help out the channel a lot. Well, that's it from me today then. Thank you very much, guys. We'll catch you all, guys, in the next one. Bye.